Good morning, Pastor Tim here. Welcome to DCC Daily. This is our Monday through Friday 15 minute program of information and encouragement uh, specifically for our Dungeness Community Church family, but really anybody else that wants to watch is welcome to. We start every day with a picture of the day and today the picture is sent in by George Reagan. Actually, we used one of George's pictures yesterday as well, but being as how today is Good Friday, I thought this was a really appropriate picture uh, to feature. And George, thank you. Beautiful job on that. Uh, a reminder of what Christ has done for us on the cross. Speaking of the cross and Easter, of course, this is Easter Sunday coming up. Uh, we, Pastor Wayne has recorded a, or is recording a sunrise service and we'll have that available online in time for Sunday morning. So if you want to get up early and have your own Easter sunrise service, you just come back to the YouTube channel and there will be an Easter sunrise service there for you with Pastor Wayne. I believe Jeff Forberg is going to help with some music and uh, you can start your day with them. At 10 o'clock we'll have our Easter worship service and invite you to come for that. I'll be starting a new teaching series called Breakfast with Jesus, Ask Him Anything. Pastor Britt is going to have something for our children. We'll have some music and just a good time to focus our hearts and minds this Easter. Then uh, that evening at 6.45 to 7.15, again, we will have a prayer time via a conference call. So if you would like to call in or get online and be part of that, we would invite you to do that. Oh, one other reminder. For Easter, actually Easter and the Sundays going forward, Local Cable Access Channel 21, part of Wave Cable, invited churches to put their services online, especially right now when so many people are at home and need some encouragement. And so we are going to start doing that this Sunday, Easter Sunday, and our service will be on at 12 noon on Wave Cable Channel 21. So if you know someone that that would be a help to them, just let them know that they can check it out on channel 21. It'll be the same service that is shown at 10 o'clock online, but it's uh, delayed for showing on Wave Cable. Round to it projects. We have been celebrating things that people have finally got around to doing. And today the project we want to celebrate, actually it is a library of projects. Uh, John and Jeannie Vieta sent in a not a project, they sent me a laundry list of things they've been doing. They are busy beavers. Let me tell you some of the things that they've been up to while they've been stuck at home. They got their front porch finished. John washed and waxed the truck. They finished their spring pruning and hauled some crushed rock and did some landscape changes to the front yard. He scraped and painted the utility trailer. Uh, moved the freezer and a portable closet and revamped the shelves for their disaster preparedness supplies. Uh, so, hey, what better way to use your time during a disaster than to prepare for the next disaster? Good job. Uh, they also painted an old portable camping cupboard that they're going to use on the back porch. Repainted the letters on the sign that hangs over the back gate. And then they rearranged the furniture in the den which included moving a big desk. And then the final thing on his list, he said, to be continued. Wow, you guys, you, you've got to just take some time off to rest here, but, but good job on getting it done. We celebrate you getting around to it. Yeah! Let's go to a verse for today because this is Good Friday, which seems like an odd thing to call it, because what could be good about the day on which Christ was crucified? But this passage from Romans chapter 5 tells us why it is good for us. It says, While we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's what's good. 
about Good Friday, that when we were still at our worst, Christ loved us enough to die for us at terrible price to himself. And yet, what amazing, great love for us. I hope you'll have time today to reflect on how much you are loved and then be prepared to celebrate that that wasn't the end of the story. Easter is coming. Well, let's go to our final interview of the week. The interview today is going to be a little bit different. Before we ever started doing these daily programs, Dale Arvison had started a project for the elders to do some videos of each one of our elders where they could tell a bit of their story and uh, share some encouragement. And uh, then that project got a little bit sidetracked when all of this pandemic stuff started. And I've had some of these interviews sitting around, and I thought this would be a good time to share some of those with you. And so today I want you to hear from Chuck Bishop, who is one of our longest serving elders. Uh, so here's Chuck. My story is kind of simple. You know, I grew up in the church, um, but uh, the verse that I stake my claim on is, for by grace are you saved. It's a gift. It's not of any works that we can boast. Early on, um, my parents were divorced when I was uh, uh, oh, five or six. And uh, so there was this hole in my psyche that uh, was, was created. I think we all have it one way or another, but that's how mine was kind of accentuated. And um, so uh, the, the part of the verse that grace, God's grace, he's brought several men into my life to help kind of regain, kind of fill that hole, but that hole is a God hole. They modeled God the Father, and uh, one was my grandfather. Um, we went to live with him. Um, Grandpa was a God-fearing man and, and uh, just a, a wonderful person. Um, and then my mom remarried, and uh, he was a new Christian. My stepdad was a new Christian, and I got to the point where he was definitely dad. So God's grace brought that a, a father, actual father back in, so I had a dad. Um, but uh, further down the way, uh, the other person uh, in, in my life has been my father-in-law, Ted Sires, uh, has modeled Christ in a way that uh, just uh, has helped me to get beyond um, where I was. Um, so early on, I was raised in basically a Christian home at that point, I would say. And uh, early on, uh, probably about, uh, I can remember, don't remember exactly the age, but it was a Bible camp that I accepted Christ as my Savior. Um, but, you know, that, that whole thing about wanting to please people, I kind of transferred that to God. And, and uh, so I would say I kind of promptly became religious. Uh, and that's why, you know, the other part of that verse is not of works because we can't boast about it. And uh, when I moved to Squim and, and uh, that whole uh, thing came into play of being religious, you know, I still kind of was carrying that on. It's a hard thing to break. And um, went to work for for someone we, at that point I wasn't hadn't uh, wasn't much of a carpenter at that point um, but uh, we were building a building for the business and and uh, the owner jokingly said we should put up a sign that says our best is not very good and you know I thought about that uh, there's a place in Isaiah where it says all our filthiness, all our righteousness, our righteousness, our very best is filthy rags. And that's when I started becoming to the conclusion that when I stand before God, my, my goodness, my righteousness is just as filthy rags. Fortunately, I'm trusting Jesus for my righteousness. He sees Jesus not my best, not my filthy rags. And that's what I stake my claim on. So 
part of that religiousness, uh, God's grace is that, you know, we've got this stuff in our lives that he wants to work out. In Isaiah, he also goes on to say that he's the potter, we're the clay, and he forms us with his hands. You know, religiousness can be a trap. And so, you know, when I talk with people, I, I just, you know, it isn't about us necessarily creating things. We're going to do good works, but it's his work in us that we're able to do those good works. And as he empowers us, we can do them. I heard one person say, uh, you know, we have this tendency, we want to push the car. I think it's a good analogy. Well, you know, anybody realize you're not going to push a car very far. It's the car's engine that is a power. It's the Holy Spirit living in us. And that's how I'd like to encourage people to, to do that is, is live by, let God be the goodness in you and, and let him empower you. Don't do it in your own strength because your own strength is filthy rags. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I trust you have a blessed and a wonderful Easter weekend, even though it is going to be a different pace of Easter. I trust it'll be a special one for you. Have a great weekend.